You know, Presto Pots might be the most confusing piece of candle making technology out there today. Do you want to spout? Don't you want to spout? How do I get all the wax into where I need it to be? What do I measure? How do I do all that? Today's video, we're going to cover all of that in depth. Let's go. Hello, my name is Kevin. Uh, today, we're just going to jump right into it, right? We're going to talk about Presto Pots, and at the end, we're actually going to make some candles using Presto Pots. I'll show you some techniques, hopefully to get you going a little bit better. But remember that all that candle making is, is really five main steps. Measuring, melting, pouring, curing, and finally burning, the part that we all look forward to. Measuring is really just getting all your supplies together, making sure you have a game plan, knowing what notes to take, knowing how much fragrance oil, wax, what wicks, what containers, how you're gonna do all that. That's all the measuring stage. Melting is exactly what it sounds like, but it's where the Presto Pot comes into play. And that's, you know, you have a few options that we'll cover here, but melting is just bringing that wax down to the right uh, temperature and then adding your fragrance oil. And then eventually we move into the pouring stage, which is where we actually transfer that wax, that melted wax with the fragrance oil and the color, whatever else is in it, into the containers or the molds whatever you're pouring that day and you know that's its own stage because the temperatures are really critical the technique is important everything needs to be prepared at that point finally we move to curing curing is where we leave that candle alone in a relatively stable environment so that it can harden up and that fragrance oil can disperse if you're curious about curing if you're wondering what you should be doing there check out this video and then finally Burning, right? Burning is the part of candle making. Like that, it, it, without burning, there's no candles, right? Burning is super critical. And whether that's burning to test the candle or to see if it smells good, uh, or if you're just the customer of the candle and you're burning it for your own pleasure, burning is the final stage in the life cycle of the candle. But I want to take us all the way back to the melt stage of candle making. And we're going to talk about the three main ways that most people melt candle wax for candles. The first way that most people do is the double boiler. And that's where you fill some pot with water and then you put some wax in a pour pot, which this is a pour pot, or a measuring glass, a measuring glass works too, and you set it in there. The water boils all around it and the wax melts inside the double boiler. Now water can only get to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, so it could take a while for your wax to melt. There's some pros, there's some cons, but this video is not about this. The second way is to actually put your wax on direct heat. So this is a hot plate, a hot plate, and you put your wax into a pour pot right here. You just set it right on the hot plate. You gotta be careful with these things because these get, they get hot. And you melt your wax on your direct heat. You mix everything inside the pour pot and then you transfer from the pour pot usually directly into your containers or molds. And the final way, today's video is all about using Presto Pots. Now Presto Pots, uh, Presto's really just a brand name, right? Presto is a kitchenware maker actually, but a lot of people may refer to these as wax melters. Wax melters, Presto Pots. Actually, there's a lot of brands out there that you can look into using for candle making. But the heart of it, you've got this massive container Inside of this mass container, you put in your wax and you actually have a few options at that point as far as how you want to take the rest of the stages on. You can buy these from Walmart, Amazon, Etsy, you name it. Search wax melter, search Presto Pot. Usually they come with like this uh, deep frying thing that you can use to strain things out. That's normal. That, that's kind of exactly what you're looking for. There are DIY videos online about, you know, if you want to make your own to install a spout, but like, let's talk about that spout for a second. Should you get one with the spout or no? Well, in my experience, the spout is awesome. It's great. Now, what it does is it obviously it allows you to melt wax inside of here and then release the spout to pour that wax or transfer it into a different container. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, do I just melt the wax and do all my stuff here and then spout it into my, my jars? Well, you could, but usually the spout comes out with a lot of velocity. It's a little bit messy, probably gonna introduce a lot of air. So there's actually an intermediate step where we spout it into a pour pot. Now this is where all the options come into play. But if you don't get a spout, then your other option is to use a ladle or use some other tricky device to get your wax, which is melted at this point, from here to wherever you wanna go next. 
whether that's a pour pot or a jar, you've got options. So let's talk about the pros of Presto Pots for a second. Now the really good thing, the reason a lot of people switch to these is capacity. You can hold a lot more wax and melt a lot more wax at once in here. And you can even find these that come in these massive, massive sizes, right? So you're melting tons of wax at a time. You know, when we go back to the double boiler, the very first one, usually you can only fit so much wax inside of your pour pot. So like you can only melt so much at a time. And, and because of the depth and how that whole thing works, you can't really use a huge pour pot like filled with a lot of wax. You have to use a smaller one typically because that heat takes a long time to transfer to the rest of the pour pot. Using the hot plate, however, you can get a little bit more because that hot plate does get that heat through the, the pour pot pretty well. You don't want to use a measuring glass on a hot plate because glass, heat, eh, that's not a good combination. But you can get a little bit more, but you can, nothing matches a wax melter. Nothing matches a Presto pot, right? These things come in big and they scale very easily. A few cons of the Presto pot, and really they're not a big deal, it's just kind of the nature of the beast is there's a little more details around how you're gonna get your wax from here to your containers. You don't necessarily wanna spout from here into your containers, but you have to transition this to, into a pour pot typically, and then you have to move it from the pour pot into the container, so there's a little extra step in there. But it's a little necessary to be able to batch at the scale that you can batch with these containers. Well, you'll see this in a second when we make a few candles. Okay, I think I've talked enough about this. Let's actually make some candles. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll give you a few options for how you want to melt your wax and actually create your candles and then we'll come back here and wrap up. So obviously the first thing you got to do is measure out the supplies and with the Presto Pot we can hold a lot more wax. So it's actually good to measure your wax into a larger container. I'm using an old stove pot here. If you're curious about the math and exactly how much you need to put in, um, you can check out this video. With the Presto Pot though, because you might lose some in the transfer process, I actually recommend putting a little extra wax than what you normally need and we'll measure the fragrance oil after the fact. If we knew exactly how much wax was in our melter, then we could add our fragrance oil directly to the melter and stir it in any color, but we don't. In this case, we're actually gonna transfer into our pour pot, which we just teared out to zero on our scale. And when we transfer it into the pour pot, then we'll add and measure our fragrance oil, depending on what our fragrance load is. Now, if you're curious about math around fragrance load and wax and wax weight and total weight and all that nonsense, you can check out this video. But for now, we're gonna transfer this in. We should have some idea of what we need for our candle containers. But we're gonna transfer the wax in, and then we'll weigh it, and then we'll determine how much fragrance oil we need based on how much wax we have in there, because we're gonna mix it all in the pour pot. So we'll take a note of how much we actually got into the pour pot and then we'll weigh out our fragrance oil. So depending on what your fragrance load is, let's say this was 6.5%, we'll just take the weight of wax, melted wax is the same weight as solid wax, we'll take that weight of wax, we'll multiply it by 6.5% and that is exactly how much fragrance oil we need. Remember the fragrance load is a percentage of the wax weight not the total weight of the candle. The rest of the process is pretty normal. You know, add your fragrance oil, stir for two minutes, 
and then pour into your candle containers when you're at temperature. Now, the whole thing with the transferring, when you're moving this wax out of the Presto Pot into a pour pot, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is you can lose a lot of temperature very fast. So there's a couple things you can do to mitigate this. Some people will take their pour pot and keep it on a hot plate with the wax in it while they're doing all the measuring and stirring and all that just to keep the wax at temperature. The other option is to preheat your pour pot with a heat gun, you know, just blast it, get it nice and warm before you transfer the wax into it. Now we're pouring three containers, so it would have behooved us to make sure that when we're transferring from the Presto pot into our pour pot, that the total weight of our wax was at least enough to get into these three containers. Like I said, we can batch a lot of candles, so if you end up doing a lot and you just know that, heck, I'm gonna have plenty of wax, then you can just kind of go for it. But uh, good practice would be not to waste your materials, not to waste your supplies, and make sure that you're being a little bit more cautious with how much you're pulling out of that wax melter. And you can see I actually have a little too much in my pour pot, so not a big deal, but um, it'll be okay. I can pour that back into the melter or I can put it in a wax melt, whatever else I wanna use it for. Cool. So I hope some of that was helpful, useful, or insightful. You know, Presto Pots are the future. If you're moving to scale into candle making, you want to actually get serious about your game, you should be investing in something like this because you're not, your time is valuable and you're not going to be able to batch the amount of wax necessary with a lot of other methods or you're going to need a ton of hot plates or a ton of double boilers going at once. And, you know, if you want to take this craft to the next level, time and capacity are your friends. Well, I think I've said enough. If you have any questions, comments, or insights, leave a comment. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles batched in Presto Pots, and I will see you in the next episode.